he keeps himself in trim by bending bars of iron. This bar is the genuine article which we tested before he began to play with it. Beyond the bend, beyond the bend. Squeeze us. Welcome to Beyond the Bend. Greetings. <laughs> awesome. Right yeah. So tell me about the first time you ever saw anyone bend a nail or a piece of steel. Um, I mean, probably my first, first exposure to it was um, whenever I was in, I think, like fifth grade. And we had one of those um, like church groups come to the, I was going to like a private Christian school. And we had a church group come in and it was like the power team sort of thing. And they were like breaking baseball bats and like bending, bending nails and metal and stuff. And of course, you know, I just thought like, wow, this is incredible. These guys are, are supernaturally strong to be able to do all this stuff. But, um, you know, little did I know there's techniques, there's techniques and, and a lot of work that goes into it to be able to do that stuff. Um, but pretty much as soon as I came into um, doing uh, just general grip things, um, just because of their sort of uh, proximity to one another, um, I saw that there was a bunch of people bending, bending nails, bending bolts and stuff. And I was like, that's cool, but I'm more interested in the grip stuff. So I stayed out of it for, for a good while. Gotcha. So <laughs> at the time you were getting into grip, were you already lifting like more traditionally or not, not really? Um, so I, I had started doing, um, power lifting as a result of, um, a shoulder injury that took me out of rock climbing, which was something I did for a long time. Um, I, I tore a rotator cuff and basically stopped doing anything. And then I went to a doctor to get it checked out and he was like, well, you definitely have to have surgery. And I was like, well, I'm going to do physical therapy instead. And, um, I, I did the physical therapy and then stopped and I was like, wow, my shoulder's starting to hurt again. I guess I have to work out. And that was the beginning of me working out like on a regular basis outside of just doing things that I thought were fun or active. And that kind of went into like a bodybuilding slash powerlifting phase. And um, I think just by virtue of being in the kind of strength culture, I saw that there were... Um, you know, other like more narrow things that were uh, like grip related. And I was like, well, that'd be fun to try. I figure I have a pretty strong grip from being a rock climber and um, bought some grippers and it, and it kind of went off the rails from there. Nice. At, at what age was that when you hurt your shoulder and started the uh, traditional lifting? Uh, I think I, I think I hurt my shoulder. Um, Oh, in the stupidest way possible, too, because I was doing the rock climbing. I actually hurt my shoulder diving after a Frisbee while I was playing Ultimate. Uh, <laughs> but I think I was 23, 24 when that happened. Okay. So already an adult. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm finding that interesting. Uh, I guess yesterday was, I think, 24 when he started lifting with any kind of uh, serious nature to it. Uh, Derek, the first guest being the exception, started bending at 14, which is just wild. My, my son, who's eight, uh, can do a braced um, white nail and green nail so far. So yeah. <laughs> maybe he'll uh, catch up to Derek when he's 14. Yeah. Um, so tell me where you're from and what you do for a living. Um, well, I'm originally from Paducah, Kentucky, uh, but I moved to Nashville and I've been here um since i was 18 i came here for school and i just stayed um i'm 34 now um and i'm a mechanical engineer uh as my day job and uh on the side i build uh, grip strength equipment with my barrel strength systems oh right now what's the name of it again so we get a proper plug it's uh barrel strength systems oh nice Okay, we'll link that for sure. <laughs> and how long have you been uh, running that? Um, I think I started it in the fall of 2015. Cool. 
Yeah. I, yeah. That's when I had gotten into grip and, um, you know, I saw that there was a need for like higher, cause a lot of people were using like homemade stuff or stuff that was like pretty much homemade and there wasn't a lot of consistency. So I saw a need for better equipment out there and some stuff that just people hadn't come up with yet and started building it. Nice. Yeah. I was just watching a YouTube video that was like a, bit of an interview that you had in your show on um like a pinch trainer an aluminum pinch trainer yeah that's uh the flask that was that was kind of the catalyst for starting everything um the the pinch device was previously used was it was um expensive really big hard to use and um and i mean it was actually it was actually too heavy for for beginners it, weighs 50 pounds empty yeah so if if your pinch is below 50 pounds you can't really train with it i mean you could train two-handed but you can't do you can't train one-handed pinch right right i'm actually uh I, so during quarantine is where i really sort of like launched into heavy weight training i always kind of played around but not with any real motivation or dedication and um when we got locked down up here in new york i reached out to a strength coach and had him write me up a program and just basically pivoted all my passion for jujitsu straight into lifting and um, from there kind of branched out into grip then then therefore into bending but uh part of the part of that routine was plate pinching and uh it really uh to pinch 225s took some work for sure and i felt like i had a decent grip and uh now trying to work up to pinching 235s it's like that's a big jump in between you know exactly exactly so that sounds like a brilliant a brilliant thing you've designed but so how many days a week are you training and what does your training look like right now including bending and other stuff um it's kind of uh it's kind of touch and go lately um i've been i've been busy with a lot of projects around the house and um I've been having uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of issues from uh, from a surgery that I had last year with my back. It's not bad, but like some days I'm just like, man, I don't really feel like doing any of this stuff. Or like I'll work really hard in the yard, and then the next day I have to work out, and I'm like, mm, probably gonna leave out some of the the heavy hinging stuff that's in here. But um, I typically work out uh, three or four days a week. Um, most of those days, I'll try to throw in some uh, some grip work, but it'll be, you know, half or three quarters uh, compound movements, typically with a kettlebell. So swings, presses, snatches, cleans, that kind of stuff, squats, whatever. And um, every day, I do rehab exercises for my for my back. Um, uh, bird dogs, dead bugs. Um, and then of course with grip, I try to get some kind of thick handle uh, movement, some kind of pinch, whether it's wide or narrow. Um, I've been working on grippers lately. I don't, I don't normally train grippers, um, especially when I'm competing. Cause I don't, I don't, most of the competitions I do don't have grippers, but lately I've been doing them for fun. So working on those. And then, <clears throat> Once or twice a week, I'll throw in a bending session. Nice. Nice. You kind of touched on it, but is there anything particular that you do for recovery? I know you're doing some stuff for your back, but in general, I saw you doing some mobility stuff in that YouTube video. That, that looked cool. I like that stuff. Um, I do. Uh, well, first and foremost, I, I try to get uh, enough sleep and enough food. If, I'm, if my calories aren't high enough, and if I'm not sleeping enough, like I just break down over time and I, I'll get to a point where I, I can't, like I, I can just feel my body and be like, if I go in the gym, I'm gonna hurt myself. Um, so sleep and food first and foremost. Um, but in terms of like maintaining my hands, uh, I have uh, dexterity balls. Um, I think Derek actually mentioned the, the, like they're the, the Chinese uh, yeah. uh, bow ding balls, but uh, the ones that I, I have, I actually sell them as well but they're just heavy solid steel uh balls and then i use those uh most times i do a grip workout but certainly every time i do grippers because grippers are just really hard on my hands and um 
I have a couple of protein buckets that I fill with um, weights and I've cut around the, the top lip, cut the, the threaded portion off and put tape around it. And I put my hand down into the bucket and use my extensors to lift it. Oh, nice. Um, so I, I do that as well uh, for recovery. And then um, I have uh, another device that I made uh, called the wrist mace, which um, lets me do uh, all of the different wrist motions. Um, so pronation, supination, uh, radial and ulnar deviation, flexion. All right. Wow, that uh, sounds cool. Nice. And that's just one piece of equipment that does all that? Yeah. Yeah. Right um, I used to use a sledgehammer, but it wouldn't yeah. let you do flexion and extension. Um, yeah. So with this, oh, with the wrist mace, you can basically change the position that your hand is on the, uh, on the, the ball end of it and mm -hmm. get both of those motions. Nice. So uh, you kind of mentioned nutrition, but do you follow any particular diet or just try to eat pretty healthy or not really? Um, I mean, this is a real dude thing to do, but like, I just like, if left alone, I eat like trash. <laughs> my, my girlfriend does a, a pretty good job of, of uh, guilting me into eating vegetables and um, she'll, she'll make stuff with vegetables in it. And she, she makes smoothies for herself every day. She makes enough for both of us. So I just kind of get, Nutrition by osmosis. There you go. That works. <laughs> so on, on your Instagram, I see you down there bending some pretty pretty big bolts and stuff. And uh, just if you could walk me through, basically, I feel like it takes a special kind of person to just want to go out to the garage or the basement and just bend steel, right? You know. So kind of just walk me through, like, what motivates you, if you can even articulate it, or if it's just, like, a primal thing. Um, I think for myself and, uh, for a lot of people, um, like me, there's like the certification or like achievement aspect of it. Um, so obviously my, my first goal was to, uh, bend the red nail and get on the red nail roster. It was like one of the iron mine things that I haven't done yet. So, um, that's what I started working on. But as I kind of got into it, I was like, okay, this is actually like more fun than I thought it would be. Um, so there's, there's like the, the fun portion of it. Um, but I guess one of the more, I guess, rare aspects of it that, that uh, draws me to it, the metallurgical aspect. So uh -huh. being a mechanical engineer, I had to take, classes on on uh, mechanics and materials material science so for me it's interesting to to like look at the differences and like how hard it is to kink a piece of cold rolled steel versus a right. piece of steel or like uh how much spring back there is in a piece of hardened carbon steel versus you know a grade two bolt or um you know how how tough brass seems to be in the crush like those are all like really interesting aspects for me so like if i find new bolts to purchase um that i haven't bent before um that'll get me really excited and i'll be like you know just waiting for however many days to pass till my hands are recovered enough that i can get in and try some new steel yeah yeah you know what's funny is uh, i've been thinking about a lot lately is i worked for seven years as a um a mill operator at a machine shop but we only dealt with graphite we made graphite electrodes and uh so i have no no um awareness of metallurgy or anything really because uh we primarily just made parts out of graphite we, we didn't really do any metal work at all i personally didn't do any at all but i wish i had because i'd have some some uh, familiarity with the uh the hardnesses and things <laughs> wow yeah that's that's interesting i haven't thought about graphite milling so do you not need any uh lubrication no 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 huh. lubrication is the floor really slippery yeah, and I'm, I'm like, if it was like a couple of years ago, my hands would still be uh, stained from it. It's my my car seat uh, in my car is still black oh. from it, basically. Yeah, um, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but we, uh, yeah, you just have to have some suction to just get that stuff out of there because it'll start clogging up and breaking your bits and stuff. And then also, uh, we did a lot of really thin thin work and um, 
So we'd use a vacuum chuck to hold it down. And a lot of times we'd, we'd mill the form into this chuck and then we'd uh, drill holes into that and then turn on the vacuum and it would suck it flat. And then we'd mill our features into that. Um, mostly aerospace stuff, actually. We are making the Electro uh, for Boeing and uh, a few other companies. Right on. Yeah. Um, so Red Nail got that done. You mentioned some other Iron Mind certs. Uh, what are some of the, the bends and feats of strength that you're most proud of? It doesn't have to be cert stuff. It can be anything. Um, in terms of uh, bends, like right now I'm still sort of in the infancy of bend stuff. Um, but things that I've had to work the hardest for are the bends that, like the bends that, that were the hardest for me. I bent like a, I think it was a four inch piece of CRS. And of course I, I'm stronger than I was um, th uh, back then, but it was a four inch by a quarter inch piece of CRS. And that was, that was really, really hard and very, very painful. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely proud of that. I've actually got a little rack um, on my bending shelf that has all of my PR bends on it. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of, of just about all of those. Um, I was definitely proud when I bit my first red nail, proud when I bit my first bastard. Um, and then on grip stuff, I'd have to say um, proud of lifting the Blobzilla. That took a long time for me to train up to. Um, and I think the things that I take more pride in are the ones that I actually had to like work towards getting. So, um, could you explain what the Blobzilla is real quick for people that probably might not know? Oh yeah, um, Blobzilla is um, it is the head of a dumbbell uh, that is cut off. That is that's a blob. Blobzilla is the name that was given to the head of a uh, York. Um, York Legacy 135 or 130 dumbbell. So it weighs, uh, mine weighs 64.1 pounds and it's just enormously wide. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. Um, yeah, I would say outside of that, uh, probably my other, one of my other favorite feats was lifting a shallow, um, a shallow 45 plate with I think 15, was it 15 pounds added to it. Uh, that was a that was a, a Brian Shaw um, grip challenge, and wow. uh, I was the only only person that was able to complete it. And he said he was going to give somebody a hundred dollar steak dinner if they could if they could do it, and he never replied. So Brian oh. Shaw, steak. we're gonna get to the bottom of that if I ever get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that must be that rock climber uh, finger dexterity on that the hub uh, grip. That's oh, yeah. Oh, baby, that is, I can't even imagine that. So, got into stuff you've already done. What's some stuff you hope to get done? Um, well, I, I just bought a bunch of bolts from uh, Jan Heller, and um, I got through the three bottom bolts, and I would like to break into the, the advanced, I think it was the 8.8 .8 bolt, um, I hit that thing and it, it, it was, it seemed like it was considerably harder. Um, it's, it's about, it's about the difficulty of the edging. So I guess I would like to bend a European edging as well as a, an actual edging. Um, I, I was talking with, uh, Jaden Majinski and he said that uh, we, we kind of came to the consensus that a lot of the new FBB, FBC stock Fat Bastard Barbell Company stock is yep. harder than it was in the past. Um, so I've got a hex that I've hit on a few times and I just wobbled one of them and it's just a regular steel uh, 5 16 hex. So I've kind of got my eyes on that, but I think it's going to be a little while before I can get it because I gave it everything that I had last session and yeah, wobbled. Actually, have a bag, uh, uh, like a miscellaneous vendor's bag, uh, coming from them right now. Actually, uh, so do you have a particular training plan that you're going to run to try to get those? You're just going to hit it, recover, hit it again. I go back and forth. Um, 
with grip and pitching as to whether like having a like powerlifting style training plan is effective. Um, well, I mean, I know especially especially for people on that are coming into it, having a like structure plan of any sort will work as long as they're not doing something that's directly detrimental like overtraining or like missing missing workouts entirely um but uh for my bending i just try to get in there and get some volume in and, and try some hard stuff um you know once once or twice a week i'm not going to go for like huge pr bends uh, twice a week but if my hands are feeling up to it i'll try some harder stuff bend a red nail um on on an easier day just because that i don't really feel too torn up after i after i bend a red nail or a bastard uh -huh. uh, and um you know i was listening to the podcast with derek and he was talking about isos it's kind of interesting um what is an iso other than missing a pr yeah yeah it's a good point so, um, I mean, it's one of those things where, I mean, as long as you're not working through injuries, um, there's probably not too much uh, hurt you can cause by by going heavy a, a couple times a week. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I think, I guess it was Clay that mentioned it, was um, if you have a, something that's just like out of reach is uh, kink it in a vice or get a bunch of them, kink them in a vice and then just practice crushing them down from there. So you get a feel of just getting that thing moving and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Free kinking to different, different angles is certainly a good way to get through sticking. Yeah. On a normal bending day, and maybe you're going to try something hard at the end of the workout. You mentioned you might bend a red, red nail or something. Are, do you do a specific warm up? Or you just kind of go down there and just get to it? Uh, yeah, I try to stick to a similar form factor for all the bends that I'm going to do in a day. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, bend a bunch of six-inch stock and then try try a seven-inch nail. Uh, so if, I, if, I, if my goal bends are to be seven inches, um, and that's typically, you know, I'll do all seven-inch one day or all six-inch one day. Um, so if I'm going to try to bend – say that that set uh five sixteenths hex i would start with a 60d just because that's my first bend but after that um i'll bend uh you know a five uh a grade five quarter inch um seven inch nail or bolt yeah uh, and uh uh five sixteenths grade two and then a red nail or a bastard and, and go into the, the, the harder stuff that I'm trying to PR on. Um, and then with six inch, I'll do the same thing, but everything is six inches. That makes sense. Yeah. And um, are you familiar at all with um, uh, functional range conditioning? No. Um, there's a, there's a system called FRC and they have, um, uh, things called cars, uh, controlled articular uh, rotations, I believe is what it is. Um, and I'm not certified by them, but I've been to I've been to workshops, and uh, my girlfriend Maria, she's a she's a strength coach, and she's got the certification, and, and um, my current coach also has a certification. But basically, you move your joints through um, different ranges um, actively. Oh. And um, I use I use uh, shoulder cars, elbow cars, and uh, scapular cars as a warm up for bending because um, <laughs> I've I've had shoulder injuries in the past, and I certainly don't want to snap myself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, as you heard on the first episode, that we were talking about shoulder mobility, and um, that seems to be a huge thing. And uh, all of my years as a grappler uh even though i i wouldn't say i'm an inflexible guy um i have from playing i'm not sure who, how familiar you are with uh jujitsu or um uh, but from playing like guard or butterfly guard right where i'm very like curled up and hunched um playing from the bottom i my shoulders go this way you know like and uh to get this to get it underneath my chin i'm finding that i have to try to get a bit more flexible because i think i i have the str have more strength than i'm able to utilize 
because of my uh, shoulder mobility at this time. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, you know, if you've ever seen rock climbers, they have a similar posture where they're they're kind of hunched, their shoulders are kind of in. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the the being able to get the bar under your chin whenever you're you're not flexible in that way uh, is is big. Yeah, it's funny that uh, something as uh, physical as rock climbing or jujitsu, uh, you end up with a similar posture to someone that like sits in a chair the whole day. You know, <laughs> it's like it's kind of frustrating like that. But um, so one thing that I that I like and that I think made me get so into this so quick um, is when I'm down here bending, I truly believe that I'm building that functional, like people call it farm strength, dad strength, old man strength, like the type of strength when you shake somebody's hand, they're like, they know what's up, you know? And like with, with having a ton of experience grappling people, I uh, certainly know that the most cut up guy might not feel like the most cut up guy and sometimes a guy that just looks like an average dude might have the scariest grip going and he's probably like a stonemason or a, a, you know, a bricklayer or a mechanic or something. And I'd just like to know your thoughts on the relationship between bending workouts, grip, and building that type of strength that's sort of hard to replicate doing uh, traditional uh, lifts. Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, grip strength and bending strength are – literally functional strength um you know you're you're bending um i would say i would say that there is um a lot of specificity to um kinking a nail um in double overhand like that's not that's not a movement that people use very often but the crushing portion of it the um if you do any reverse um that's that's like definitely definitely functional strength being able to to generate force in that way um you know i i uh was at a competition several years ago before i started bending and um i was at jp straussner's house and he had a big piece of cable that was kind of looped around um it was it wasn't a full circle it was like maybe a half circle piece of just like thick braided cable steel cable and um, he was like, hey, uh, I've got this cool challenge. You take the ends of this piece of cable and um, try to bend it together to where the ends touch. And, um, you know, I, at the time, I had been doing a lot of powerlifting. And my, my bench was around, uh, I think my, my best was a, a paused uh, 340. So pretty good bench for a dude my size. That's not what, like a, how big are how, what, uh, how tall and how heavy are you? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I'm five foot eight at the time. I was about two, ten, two fifteen. I weigh about two hundred now. Okay. Okay. Um, but he hands me this this cable, and I try to bend it, and like I, I can um I can almost get the ends to touch, but there's it's so much stability required to keep them from like going off to the side. I couldn't do it, and we hand it off to um, uh, Delmar Carter, who is another elite bender. And he grabs this thing and just smacks the ends together like three times real fast. And he's like, is this how you do it? <laughs> I was like, I was like, geez, Delmar, how much do you bench, man? And he was like, I don't know, like 265. And I was just like, what the hell is going on yeah. here? Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was definitely um, a good illustration to me of, of the difference between, um, you know, powerlifting strength or, or lifting like gym strength and and farm strength and and strength is generated from a specific type of of you know grip and bending training um but another uh, to one of the points that you made about uh jiu-jitsu which i think is also very like uh functional strength and farm strength related um i used to train uh chinese kempo back when i was a kid so i like i know a little bit about um ground fighting but I've forgotten a lot. Like I, I don't really, I could, I could do some submissions on someone that had no idea what, what they were defending against, but I'm not going to be able to get a trained person. But I was at Paul Knight's house, uh, another elite grip and bending guy. And um, we were uh, doing feats and 
drinking, I think, after a competition, maybe before a competition. I think it was after the competition. I wouldn't have done this before a competition. And were, <laughs> hey, man, I got some mats down in the basement. You want to go wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> and I knew that Paul did, uh, did jiu-jitsu and MMA, and I was like, uh, sure, man. So we go down there. And we, we start, and I'm like, shit, I cannot remember how to really defend against any of this stuff. I don't know how to convert anything into a submission. Like, I know I know how to do the submissions, but I can't get from – because he, he made it so that I was in the guard, like, almost immediately. Sure. And I was like, I don't know how to get from here to anything. Uh -huh. uh, but even so, I was able to last, like – at least 10 minutes with him because I just grabbed onto his wrists and he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't do anything because yeah. I was holding his wrists. Yep. Of course, if, if he grabbed my wrist, I couldn't do anything either. So it was yep. kind of like a weird, like crab stalemate until he um, did a uh, pillow, pillow choke, I think on me where he pulled my head down into his chest and I ran out of breath. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. They call that mother's milk, the mother smother, like all yeah. this different stuff. Yeah. What fun. I hate really? <laughs> I'm familiar with that. And, you know, uh, Eric Paulson, uh, the guy who sort of patented that move, uh, said if you do it with a sweaty rash guard on, it's called sour mother's milk. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, twisted, <laughs> twisted. But, yeah, that, um, that's why it kind of was like when I started lifting heavy during quarantine, I knew I wanted to do a lot of grip stuff because just as you said it, like that is – that is, I guess you could relate it to rock climbing too. Like your grip is purely the, what connects you to the thing you're trying to overcome, you know? And it's like, if, uh, if that's weak, it's going to be a heck of a lot harder, you know? So a grip, a strong grip is going to go a long way. In most things, you know? Um, so how about mental aspects of bending or training? Um, I think, uh, for both bending and grip, um, you, in order to, to pull out like the last 20% of your strength, you have to have, um, you have to be able to activate your, your sympathetic nervous system. Um, and for me, um, I can, I can do that, you know, uh, ammonia, uh, smelling salts is helpful. Having, you know, some metal playing is, is helpful. Uh, but also in the right emotional state. Um, you know, this year has been really hard for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so if, you know, something tragic has, like, recently happened or I've spent a lot of emotional energy, like, dealing with something, like, I can't expect to go down gym and be able to hit any PRs like it's just like the gas isn't there I can't my brain can't can't yell at my muscles loud yeah. enough to get them to work so um I think that's that's huge that's huge and um especially with bending it's such a painful exercise <laughs> you have to be able to go into a different place not only do you have to be really mad, but you have to be really mad in an out-of-body experience in order to, like, keep going. But you can, like, feel the skin, like, starting to, like, slough off of your finger. And, like, you feel like your bones are going to break while you're bending the nail. It's, it takes, it takes uh, a, a combination of factors really to, to get through some of, the, some of the hard pieces. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And sort of it reminds me of uh, something I've said uh, on the, the last two episodes and I'll probably say on most episodes because I think it's an important fact and an interesting fact is uh, I like that um, there's a binary nature to, to bending, right? In, in a world that's quite uh, gray, you know, you, get, you become a grown up and you realize things aren't black and white and, that, and pretty much everything lives in the gray area. And if you try to try to, Parse, parse out things into two groups of right and wrong clear it's uh you make yourself crazy so you come down into the basement or the garage and you bend some nails and that's very black and white you know you either bent it or you did not and and you have to live with the result of that and i, I like that and that's the reason i uh, also enjoy jujitsu you know if i get tapped there's no 
there's no spin I can put on that, you know? And if I tap the guy, that that's pure too. And it, it, it reminds me a lot of that. And uh, I was wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. And I, I think that it's, it's really cool to basically feel the tangible success as you are breaking through that that yes or no like did I bend this is this bending like you know if I start hitting if I start hitting a nail and it starts to kink that is the nail telling me yes you are doing this right and as soon as it stops that means that I'm not putting enough force into it um and then of course after I've bent the nail I have I have the nail that shows that I did it. It's in my hand. It shows that I was able to do that. Whereas, you know, like say I do a deadlift, I can do the deadlift, but as soon as the deadlift is back on the ground, it's the exact same weight step was before. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool point. And it's like, unless you video it, there's not, you know, too much to show for it. But the fact of having some physical item that is now changed because of your will is very cool. I had, uh, have you done any snapping before or no? I just started doing that like uh, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I was just like, I think I was not really planning on doing um, any uh, big bends. So I I just, I was like, well, let's just try snapping some different stuff and see what this is all about. Because to me, it was just kind of silly, but um, it's actually a really, really good workout. I, I'm just a, like, I love it, honestly. I like love that it's that hard you know like and uh i'm currently competing in david horn's steel shredder and he uh actually opened it up to have a division just for grapplers and we have to uh, yeah so you have to snap a a six inch 60 penny while laying down and uh you can see that. and then this big thing i think this is 10 mil by 20 by 18 or something and then you could you do that one standing up braced obviously um but you have to do it within 25 minutes and man oh man like i'm still recovering from that like last <laughs> week that is i the mat i did it on was drenched in sweat i got like a a big old bruise on my thigh and like a callus on my hands but just working that hard i, I just like that you know i like having to push myself that hard and then again the having the broken nail and the broken piece of steel at the end is kind of cool you know yeah so you mentioned some competing in the past or you do you have any competitions coming up are they even happening at this time with the lockdown or um well the normally the for the past few years i've kind of dialed back the number of competitions i do per year um i, I had a couple years where i did like four or five comp competitions per year, which meant I was always training. I always had some kind of injury I was dealing with and I never got to do stuff that I like specifically wanted to train. Yeah. Um, but uh, after that I did the, uh, I've hosted King Kong venues um, for four or five years now. Nice. And um, currently the plan is to have a venue for King Kong, but um, the U S uh, in particular, um, some of the southern states uh, not doing too great on okay. virus, and I, I certainly don't want to contribute to um, making the pandemic worse by by hosting a large gathering of people. So uh, okay. uh, it's tentative right now. Yeah, and what's King Kong? King Kong is an international multi-venue rip competition with four events. Um, they they change a little bit from year to year. It's um, some of them stay the same or have stayed the same for several years in a row. So the pinch event is the first event, and it's a one hand pinch on the flask. The second event is a rolling handle, which uh, traditionally has been a two and a half inch uh, crusher. Um, this year it's going to be a two and a quarter inch crusher. Um, and then the third event this year is called the grab ball, um, which is basically a, a sphere that has a flange around it so that you can't wrap your hands all the way around it. Oh, wow. And the uh, fourth event is a uh, the little bighorn um, okay. handle. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Well, 
hopefully some competitions can come back at some point. It's, yeah. It's yeah. going to be a long road, I feel like. Yeah. But uh, all right. So we've kind of start wrapping up here. I created a thing called the medley, which is a rapid fire sequence of questions, kind of just short bursts. You ready to go? Let's do it. All right. Favorite thing to bend? Uh, probably right now, stainless steel. Um, I'm not very good at kinking at the moment. Um, stainless has a good crush on it, though, so it gives me, you know, some difficulty. Yeah. Hardest thing to bend for you? Uh, probably cold rolled steel. Um, the, the stuff that most people consider hard and cold rolled steel is still pretty easy to crush for me but kinking it is like a whole nother thing so yeah strongest bending style double overhand definitely weakest style uh double underhand i haven't put hardly any work into it and it just hurts my wrists so um All right. like I've, I've bent maybe a 60d that way and i was just like i hate this yeah <laughs> how about uh best thing about the grip, grip community actually let me let me Back to the weakest bending style. I'm going to say sure. anything bare hand. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Best thing about the grip community? Um, I'm going to have to say uh, how, how, how easy, easy it is to access and how, how much information and, and help there is for it. Um, you know, in order to get started bending nails, all I need is like a couple pieces of leather or Cordura and a Home Depot or Lowe's to go to. And, um, you know, the people that are into this stuff are really into it, They're not in, in it for making a bunch of money. So you can just hop online and be like, hey, do, uh, can you tell me like anything about bending? Can you help me? And, and typically those be like, yeah. That's the reason I wanted to start this was just everybody, including yourself, was so helpful right off the bat to a stranger that was just beginning, you know? How about worst thing about the grip community? Um, there's a lot of uh, good old boy mindset within the grip community. There's people who have been in it for a long time and um it it seems like they want to keep it a garage only thing that that only dudes dudes do only only white dudes do yeah i've tried to make efforts to to diversify the sport get the get more people into it make it easier for other people to get into and i've met a lot of resistance to that so that that, that i've struggled with yeah, well, maybe we could use this platform to do some of that. I'm definitely on board with that, for sure. Yeah. All right. What do you love most about bending? Um, I don't know how to describe – I don't know how to describe it, but there's there's like a – it feels like a, a, a flame that, like, gets built up. Like, whenever you, you, like, get nice and warmed up and your blood's, like, pumping really hard – and you've got, say you've just got through your warm up, and your warm up feels really, really good, and you're like ready to like lay into something. Right after you hit that that PR bend, and like it it kinks, and you're like, this one's gonna go. Like it feels like you're on top of the world. Like you're able to do something that you set your mind to. It's I yeah. guess it's like the dope dump or whatever, but it feels great. And like for the rest of the day, you're just like, I can I can decide that I want to do something and then go and work at it and do it. Yeah. And how about, what do you hate most about bending? Um, <laughs> how jacked up my hands feel after I, I <laughs> do a bend that's too hard. Yeah, I mean, if I'm trying something that's difficult in, in single iron mine pads and I just, like, blast into the nail and, like, you know, hold the hit for, like, 10 seconds and it doesn't move, it feels like my hands get run over by a truck for like a day. Yeah. All right. Something outside training, bending, or strength sports that you enjoy? Um, I like birding. Um, uh, Maria and I, you know, we, we go out to uh, some parks around here and, and uh, just do some bird watching. It's a nice way to relax. You can nerd out on seeing some weird type of warbler that, 
that uh, only comes by once a year and it's hard to spot. Right on. Yeah, I have a bird feeder on my deck that I just check out in the morning while I'm having coffee and have a little like bird watching app on my phone to check out what I'm looking at. Awesome. All right. How about the strongest person you know inside or outside of grip? Does, doesn't matter. Um, both, well, I'm not to name two people because one of the guys isn't training anymore, and, but they're both along the same vein. So um, Cody Burns is the first one. Um, I've trained with him a few times. I've competed against him several times. And, um, you know, being in, in a strength sport and a few different – interested in a few different ones, there are people – that I expect to be like strong and like, you know, this guy's really huge and his muscles are really big. And that's why he's able to do this really big bench press. But there's also people that I see them do things. And I'm like, I don't understand this. Like, even if this person was big, like just the way that the, this person is strong at like so many different things, I don't understand it. And Cody's <laughs> one of those people. He's done feats that I didn't really think were humanly possible especially in terms of like his pinching ability uh -huh. uh, and having trained with him. Um, he's one of those people where he starts off training and you're like, like you, you know, you're warmed up, been working out for a half hour or an hour and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm keeping up with this guy. And then like, he keeps going like five hours into a workout. He's like, <laughs> he's like 50% stronger than he was like a few hours ago. And you're like, I don't, I understand how he's even working out still beyond the fact that he's doing inhuman feats. <laughs> um, um, so Cody is certainly one of those people. The other, uh, other guy that I, that I know that uh, is kind of like that is Chris Tracy. Um, and he still uh, posts all the time on Instagram. Um, and he basically came out of nowhere, um, showed up at one of my competitions and uh, just had a ridiculous grip strength. And I started following him on Instagram and, and he'll just like post, uh, post different workouts, different things, things that he's doing on Instagram. And like the other day he posted a bench press workout that he did where, I don't know, it seemed like he did like 500 reps of bench and he ended with like 80, 80 reps at 135 or something. Jeez. <laughs> and it's like he's he's a he's a bigger guy um i think he's like you know high high 200s but still yeah. like the stuff that he does is just like what even is that like <laughs> yeah what, 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 what why how on that like bud jeffries program yeah 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 that's that's another guy that's like that it's like what how how did how are you how are you doing that <laughs> so confusingly right. strong is is i guess what i would call it nice funniest reaction a person has had when they find out that you bend nails in your spare time um i guess i was I'm, i've already been kind of used to that with people finding out that i like pick up blobs and and inch dumbbells but typically the the reaction i always get a kick out of it is like i'll um i'll talk to somebody about um like social media stuff and they'll be like, are you on Instagram? And of course I haven't mentioned anything to them about bending or grip. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm on there. Um, my, my name is squeezes. And they'll like, <laughs> put it in. I'll be like, wait, is this you? Are you bending a nail? <laughs> what? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I love to get the, the, su the, the surprise on their face whenever like, I haven't even broached the topic of it. Yeah, and they like see all the 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 strength, like weird strength stuff that I do, and they're just like, "What? What? what? You do this?" <laughs> that rules. And do you listen to music while you're training? Uh, yeah, um, about about half the time. If I'm recording, unfortunately, um, I use my phone for music. So if I'm recording video, I um not listening to anything and of course uh instagram and facebook are so terrible about uh flagging stuff that has music in it so i just, i usually just try to listen to music before and then if i'm videoing then then i uh it just silenced me like grunting into the <laughs> um, what do you what are you listening to before you have to shut it off to film um typically some kind of like progressive metal sometimes uh, sometimes rap, sometimes jazz, 
Um, but the stuff that gets me like the most pumped is is typically progressive metal or um, like grindcore or yeah. just something like you know really fast, really technical. Nice, nice. Getting interesting answers on that so far. I'm going to keep that question in because uh, yeah, that's good one. it's that's it's already been quite a spectrum. <laughs> All right, you made it through the medley. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, in closing, who's someone you'd like to see on the show? Um, man, it's, it's, I, I thought about that, and it's a good one. Um, you, you've already got a bunch of really uh, good guys lined up, it sounds like. Um, but one that I, I, I'd really be interested in hearing from, that I, I, I mean, I know the guy, um, but I haven't really heard his – bending history is uh david wigren okay he's uh i think he he's, he hadn't been doing a whole lot of bending i think he had an injury uh uh that kind of put him out of it but uh, before before he uh, backed off uh he was like one of the the top top bending guys and uh nice. i'm familiar with his instagram i haven't reached out yet but i think i will awesome uh, how about some tips or advice for beginner benders? Um, Derek, Derek pretty much had it. Like work on like bend, bend more. Like just like it's it's uh it's a strength is a skill in addition to like a just a physical attribute. So you have to put in the reps, bend a lot, uh, bend consistently. Um, Mobility is big, especially for double overhand. So, you know, if you can't get the nail under your chin, you can't put force into it. So, um, like, those uh, uh, scap, scap cars and shoulder cars especially, um, I think, are good to help build up that, that active mobility um, to help with the kink. Um, the other things are, are consistency. So um, you're going you're gonna to do better if you're consistent with um, your chalking, consistent with your wrapping, like getting a nice tight wrap on the nail, making sure that you position the wraps in, in a consistent spot on the nail. So I make little marks on the, on the nail with a Sharpie um, that I use to position the wraps. Like that kind of stuff is important too. How much are you putting in the wraps? I see the guys making the marks on them. I'm just curious. Do you have an exact measurement that you're making the mark for the wrap or not? Um, I typically uh, make my marks uh, an inch and three quarters from the end of the nail. And then um, depending, on, uh, depending on how it feels, I may adjust it a little bit. Typically, I, I, I adjust it in um, by maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Okay, cool. All right, and uh, where can people find you? Social media stuff. Um, I am. I typically spend most of my social media time on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm Squeezus S Q U E E Z U S, and um, my uh, grip strength equipment company is Barrel Strength Systems on Instagram, and um, on facebook i'm gil goodman i don't i don't like facebook very much though um, but you can reach me on there at gil goodman or at barrel strength systems there as well and my email is squeezes at barrel strength systems.com nice uh, last question was any events brands or gears uh, gear you want to give a shout out anything you want to shout out besides barrel strength oh uh, yeah yeah um you know, of course, I, I mentioned uh, Jan, uh, Jan Heller's company, uh, horridobending.com. Um, yep. He recently came out with a set of certs for uh, his bolts. Um, I really like the way that he's put all that together. And um, especially for anybody in Europe, that'll be a really good place to go to to get, to get bolts um, and get, get certifications. Um, yep. Especially he's, with. He's coming on the show next week. Sweet, sweet. Um, Let's see, there's uh, JT Strassner's company, the, the challenge dude.com. He's got a few uh, bolts that he's got certs for as well. Um, of course, there's Fat Bastard Barbell Company. Um, they have a whole wide array of, of bolts and stuff that you can, you can uh, or nails and bolts that you can bend. And I think that the online uh, certs that you just send in videos for that's perfect for a situation like now where we have the pandemic and you can't actually go to competitions or have judges come to your house 
yeah um, I really like that and I think it's a good way to to keep motivated for uh, for bending yeah that's cool all right man anything else you want to say in closing mm, thanks for having me on man it's uh, yeah. really great to see um, see bending get some exposure and and um, you know hopefully have a, a renaissance the more people get into this obscure strength sport yeah I'd like that too but thanks so much for coming on man yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See ya. Later.